President Obama's proposals to limit the scale and scope of the nation's largest banks has been met with mixed reviews. Here now to discuss the issues at hand are Jeff Madrick, a senior fellow at the New School and the Roosevelt Institute. He believes the administration proposals are a good beginning and reigning in the banks is long overdue. Also, we have today Scott Talbot, Senior Vice President of Governmental Affairs at the Financial Services Roundtable, joining us from our Washington newsroom. He says the proposal will restrict lending, increase risk, and decrease stability in the system. Joining us also in today's discussion is Bloomberg columnist David Riley. Gentlemen, welcome to all of you. I would like to begin, Scott, with you. The Financial Services Roundtable represents 100 of the largest integrated financial services companies, according to your press release. So, of course, you're not going to be all that fond of the proposal we heard yesterday. Yeah, we share the president's goal with eliminating excessive risk and protecting deposits and ending the concept of too big to fail. We just think this proposal, which will hit a, a small number of institutions, will actually increase risk by limiting the ability of banks to manage their own money and manage the risk that they're exposed to, which will weaken the system. And, Jeff, you think, though, that this is a good first start? Yeah. That, that, the argument Scott made has been the argument banks have been making long before even Sandy Weil wanted to take over Citicorp in the, in the 1990s. Give us enormous scope to manage our risk and we will manage it well. They haven't. They haven't because there is a tendency to take too much risk, especially when regulators are not doing their job borrow too much, believe too much in the existing conventional wisdom and the value of those mortgage-backed securities. So this is an important first step, but only a first step in trying to isolate the deposit-taking part of the institution at, from the risk-taking part of the institution. The critics, though, of course, Jeff, say that it's a step or several steps too far. I, uh, yeah, well, I would... I think they're dead wrong. We need ca more. Ca we need serious capital requirements of the shadow banks. We need to deal with the derivatives trading, which is totally obscure because of uh, over-the-counter. Uh, because it's over-the-counter, that people think of that only as credit default swaps. But the collateralized debt obligations were also totally obscure. There's a lot to do here. I am not saying the Obama administration has solved this problem, but at least I think. They are starting to recognize how serious and difficult the problem is. It, it definitely seems, I mean, in a lot of ways right now today, the debate and discussions about how do you define proprietary trading, what are the details of this. But I think the most important point here is, as you're saying, this is a first step to actually open up the discussion in a much more meaningful way about what do we do about too big to fail banks. And, and so, Scott, one, one question I would have for you is that if you're against this proposal, what is the forum's solution for too big to fail, given that what we have right now on the table in Congress really just institutionalizes the problem? Well, first of all, the Financial Services Roundtable believes that too big to fail should go away. And I agree with the, with the first guest that we need to manage all those risks. And we agree with that proposal that this concept, however, this proposal doesn't achieve that. Ending too big to fail is dealing with all the proposals that are working their way. They've already worked their way through the House and the Senate is working through now. And that is to create a systemic risk greater, create a resolution authority, increase capital, increase liquidity ratios, to strengthen the institution, but don't take away the tools that it needs to manage those risks. Those arguments uh, are risk, risk management has been around forever. The industry made mistakes. That's, uh, that's, we all know that. So let's focus on strengthening the risk management practices but don't take away the tools that they need to do that. But, but, but Scott, one of the things is that you mentioned the legislation there. Um, in the legislation, really, what we're just getting is more bailout mechanisms. That's not about strengthening the, the risk management practices. That's just about saying carry on as business as usual. Don't we need to change no, that? I, I, have, I have to disagree. I mean, we're talking about creating a systemic risk authority to oversee the entire industry. That's a major step, a major modernization of our financial regulatory system that is about risk management as well as oversight. We're talking about strengthening consumer protections. We're talking about resolution authority. This isn't business as usual. No one wants to go back to the status quo. The system needs to be modernized, and that's what we're in favor of doing. Now, Scott, let me ask you this. If regula financial regulatory reform, if all of these discussions were in place, say, two years ago, do you think it would have avoided a crisis? I, it would have avoided them or would have decreased them significantly, depending on the specific nature. And I'm speaking generally, not about any one particular provision. But yes, it would have done a lot of good to help either eliminate or greatly reduce the risk of the failure. Scott seems to have a lot of faith in the systemic risk regulator. Let me remind all of your viewers 
that we had regulators and they failed. They failed quite miserably. I think the total story is not well known by the American public, including the Federal Reserve, which indeed has the brightest bunch of analysts and economists in the nation at its beck and call in that big building. Bloomberg is right. Go on, sorry. So just to say we're going to have a regulator and not to say we need regulations, restrictions, separations, and, uh, and, and the curtailment of some activities is not going to work in the future. It's in many ways the same old thing. Bloomberg, as I was going to ask you, is uh, running a story today saying that the existing regulators are basically just turning up the dial on regulation. So why didn't they do that before? Because you can't trust them to do that. They become, and I don't want to call them venal. I don't think they're venal or malicious. Uh, there may be a couple. They become part of the conventional wisdom. They become ideological. There is always this argument that, to some degree, and Scott can defend himself, that they made, and especially Alan Greenspan, that the derivatives market checks itself. The competition is self regulating as long as we open it up sufficiently. So they adopted an ideology that wasn't working. In fact, it was extremely yeah, harmful. And let me just, they may yeah. do the same sometime in the future. Maybe for the moment they won't. But no. what, as what we need better. to focus on here is not just sort of the systemic risk regulation. There's a lot more going on here. What we need is more effective regulation. I agree that we need to strengthen the regulations, but the key is which ones. What's the most effective way to achieving our shared goals? And so it's not just about more regulation, but rather more effective regulation, whether it's capital requirements, liquidity ratios, and, and other types of restrictions. We're actually in favor of a lot of those to help strengthen the system. But you can't go too far and you can't overregulate, otherwise you're going to stifle creativity and the free flow of capital, which will actually hurt the system. So we this, need to, to, to walk that fine line to strengthen it. So. This, from my point of view, is not remotely overregulated. It's, uh, it's trying to separate bank bankers like Weil and J.P. Morgan and Chase wanted huge... Uh, huge assets against which they could, uh, against which they could borrow, trade, take risk, and so forth. The it size is. of the balance sheet was very important to them. Having the deposit taking part of that in support of okay. all these activities was always important. All right, thank you yeah. so much. Certainly a very divisive issue, yes. gentlemen. Scott Talbot of Financial Services Roundtable and Jeff Madrick. Many thanks to both of you for your insights.